The Fallout 76 has been released for two weeks. Including the beta sessions that I have participated in, I've been playing Fallout 76 for almost a month. Throughout this time, I notice a lot of people do not know some basic mechanics about crafting in Fallout 76. This could be due to the fact that there isn't enough instruction about crafting in the game. In this video, I'll be telling you 8 tips about crafting in Fallout 76. I hope you find these tips useful. Now let's get started. The first tip I'm going to give you is about learning weapons and armors modifications. Currently in the game, there are two ways to learn equipment modifications. The first way is to obviously buy the plants from vendors or players. But the plants sold by vendors could be quite expensive if you are not dedicated in farming caps. Usually, the plants for weapons or a piece of armor would be more than several hundreds of caps. There are ways to get a better price from vendors. First, you can spec into your charisma. Second, you can get a perk called Hot Bargain. Hot Bargain decreases the price of the items vendors are selling and increases the price of the items sold to the vendors. Third, you can get a better price from vendors by using certain types of consumables, such as the bubble hats and the great mantids. Another way to learn the equipment modifications is by scrapping the set piece of equipment. When you scrap a certain type of equipment such as the hunting rifle, you'll be able to learn a modification for the hunting rifle. The mod you're learning is completely by chance. That means if you're scrapping a hunting rifle with a scope, it may not necessarily teach you the mod for the hunting rifle scope. Therefore, if you still have space in your infantry, Try to pick up all the equipments dropped from enemies, so you can scrap them as soon as you see a workbench nearby. Another way to farm modifications for a specific type of equipment is by crafting it at your workbench. Scrapping the piece of equipment you have crafted allows you to learn the modification as well. This is one of the reasons why the plans for rare weapons are so expensive among players. Since there's a low drop rate in the world, the easiest way to learn the modifications is by crafting it and scrapping it. The second tip for this video is to grab all the adhesive you come across. If you have played the game for more than a day, you may notice you have a shortage of adhesive soon. The reason for this is obvious. You need adhesives to craft almost all weapons and armors in the world. Not to mention, to repair your armors, you need extra adhesives. Let's say you have 5 pieces of armor. Repairing each of them takes you a different number of adhesives, but let's assume it takes 3 each. It would have cost you 15 adhesives just to repair the whole set of armor. Anyway, the idea is you need a lot of adhesives. The first way to get adhesives is to look for junks that gives you adhesives when you scrap them. What some of you may not know is that, you can tag a particular type of junk components for search. To do that, open up your Pip-Boy, pull out your infantry and go to the junk tab. Now you can go to the component view by pressing C. Each of the components you have in your infantry will show up and you can press space to tag for search. After you have done that, whenever you come across a piece of junk item that contains the stuff you want, there will be a magnifying glass next to the name of the junk item. Now you can pick up that bad boy and scrap it at your workbench. The second way to get adhesive quickly is to hunt for a group of enemies called Angler. They're usually found around area with water. Killing them may be difficult for new players, but if you manage to do that, each of them will give you at least 5 adhesives. It is definitely a quicker way to get adhesives, especially when you find an event that spawn anglers. And the last and the easiest way to get adhesive is to craft vegetable starch. Vegetable starch is a junk item that can be crafted at your cooking station. Each of them give you 2 adhesive when you scrap it. To craft a vegetable starch, you need 2 potato, 2 milk fruit, 2 corns, and 1 purified water. The safest and the easiest way to do it is to plant them in your camp. 
you would also like to set up a water purifier connect to generators. With that set up, you will have a constant supply of adhesives in your camp. The first tip I'm going to give you is about spoiled food, plants and drinks. The hunger and first system has been added back to this game. This certainly makes it more immersive for us to roleplay as the Vault Dweller in Appalachia. One thing that a lot of new players don't notice is that some of the foods and drinks can spoil. Just like your weapons and armors. There's a condition bar for some food and drinks. When the bar is depleted, the food will be transferred into an item called spoiled food. Compared to the normal food, spoiled food can give you a higher chance of contracting disease when you consume it. But there's still a purpose for the spoiled food. All of the spoiled item can be turned into fertilizers in the chemistry station. Fertilizers are required for making plants in your camp or workshop. So if you have some of your food spoiled, just take it to the chemistry station and make it into fertilizers. The fourth tip in this video is about junks. As a member of the Fort 76, our mission is to rebuild America. Apparently, the only way to rebuild America is to use pre-war junks. And that is the reason why we are picking up every piece of junk we come across. But unfortunately, there's a stash limit of 400 pounds. This leads to the biggest struggle we are all having, running out of space in our stash. One way to mitigate this issue is by breaking down your junks into their components. Comparing to their corresponding components, the original junk item is usually heavier. Hopefully by this time you know how to break it down into their components. If you don't, go to your workbench right now and press scrap. At the bottom of the screen there should be a tooltip showing you which button to press in order to scrap your junks. All workbenches, excluding the cooking station, allows you to scrap all your junks. One way to reduce the item weight on your body is to make a habit of going to every single workbench you come across and scrap all the junk you picked up. If you're not sure whether you had all your junks in your stash broken down, you should open up your stash and sort it by weight. When you open up your stash, there should be a tooltip at the bottom showing you which button to press in order to sort your items. The heaviest item will be showing at the top right corner, so make sure you have broken down all the junk item unless they have a specific use. Another small tip about getting more space in your stash is don't store a lot of steel and wood in your stash. Steel and wood are easily available in Appalachia and you shouldn't be having a problem collecting them. At the same time they are quite heavy. What I would suggest you to do is to keep less than 100 of each in your stash. In that way you will have enough when you actually need it, while it doesn't take up a lot of space in your stash. The next tip I'm going to give you is about privacy in your buildings. In Fallout 76, there are two ways to build. First, you can build in a camp, which acts as a portable building structure that you can carry around, just like the settlements in Fallout 4. And the second way to build is to build in a workshop that you have claimed. Workshops are like settlements that are scattered around in Appalachia. You can claim it by paying a certain amount of caps. But if the workshop is previously owned by another player, you may initiate PvP when you try to claim it. In your camp and your workshop, you can build various structures that you have learned by consuming their plants. A lot of players tend to build a house in your camp, and resources extractor in your workshops. What I've noticed is some of them did not lock the doors and the resources extractors. I would assume the reason is that they don't even know they can lock them. To lock the set item, you go to the building mode, highlight the item you want to lock, and there should be a tooltip at the bottom showing you which button to press in order to lock it. Once you press that, there should be another menu showing up asking you which level of lock you want to put on. Each level of lock requires different amount of resources. Once you've locked it, you'll be the only person that can open up the lock without picking it. 
When another player tries to pick the lock, they will be wanted and there will be a bounty on their heads. If your turrets have a good line of sight on the wanted person, they will start shooting immediately. That would be one way to notice when someone is trying to steal from you. So from now on, remember to lock your doors and your extractors. The next tip in this video is about your weapon condition. In Fallout 76, the weapon condition system is back. This means there is a certain number of times you can use your weapon before it breaks. When a weapon you are using is broken, it will be unequipped and stay in your infantry. You will not be able to use it until you fix it at a workbench. One frustrating feature of Fallout 76 is it requires the same amount of resources when you fix a weapon, no matter how broken is the item you are going to repair. This encourages us not to repair our weapon until it is really going to break. It is certainly frustrating when you break your weapon in the middle of a fight. That's why you should check the condition of your weapon between fights. One easy way to do it is to open up your favorite menu. The condition of your weapon will show up when you hover above the weapon you want to check. Another small tip about weapon condition is, when the weapon you are holding is going to break soon, there will be an icon at the bottom right corner of your screen. When you see this icon, make sure you fix your weapon as soon as possible, or have another backup weapon prepared. The next tip in this video is about crafting ammunition. In Fallout 76, you can craft ammunition of the type you want. This can be done at a tanker's workbench. There are a lot of tankers workbench across Appalachia, but you definitely want your own in your camp. The plans for tankers workbench can be obtained by doing the main quest. Even if you are not interested in the story of Fallout 76, I would still recommend you to finish some of the main quests just to get the plans for the camp. At the tankers workbench, you can craft almost all of the ammunition you can use. For ballistics bullets, the required resources is usually gunpowder, steel, and lead. For energy ammo, the required resources is usually copper, lead, and plastic. The most efficient way in crafting ammunition is to equip two perks before you craft it. The first perk is called Ammo Smith in the Agility category. With level 2 Ammo Smith, you can produce 80% more rounds when crafting ammunition. The second perk you want to equip is the Super Duper in the Luck category. At level 3, Super Duper grants you a chance of 30% to get double results in crafting anything. In my opinion, it is one of the must-have perks when you hit level 50. Once you have these two perks equipped, it shouldn't be a problem for you to get enough ammunition. The last tip I'm going to give you in this video is to create bulk materials. Bulk material is basically wrapping materials together with plastics. If you want to reduce weight by making bulk materials, bulk lead and aluminium is the only way to go. These two materials are the only ones that gives you less weight when you bulk them. In my opinion, bulking all the other materials will only be beneficial when you have the super duper perk equipped. Although the perk only gives you 30% chance to get double results, it will still be very beneficial when you are crafting scarce materials such as spring and gears. Not to mention the only cost to do this is only two pieces of plastic. There are a lot of places to find plastic in Appalachia. If you are interested, I'll be posting the location and a video of how to do it. These are all the tips I can think of about crafting at the moment. In the future, I'll be uploading more contents for Fallout 76. If you found any of the tips in the video useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Fallout 76 content. I'll see you in the next one.